Okay, I'm out. I've got some gear to test. The weather is a shocker. Uh, it's really cold. Ridiculous for a uh, April bank holiday, end of April. But I'm going to head up the hill. We'll see how we get on. I've got three bits of kit to test, including this camera. So everything I record should be on this Acaso Brave 7. So let me know what you think. I suspect the audio might be a bit dodgy. Um, but hopefully the visuals will be okay. Anyway, let's head up and see how we go on. Okay, so the first bit of kit I've got on is, hopefully you can see them, a set of Nortivate hill walking boots. And I've only worn these briefly to break them in. And I think they're okay now. So this will be the first off-road hill walkie terrain that I've tried them on so we'll see how this goes um, very good value, I'll put it on the screen so far they seem really good but jury's out, I really wanted to take them up the hill and see how they genuinely feel over 24 hours so after some actually really decent weather recently this is an absolute shock to the system it's about 4-5 degrees I'm going to go up at least a thousand feet, so that will drop a couple. It's blowing, it's uh, really chilly. Anyway, I'm going to stay below the clag in the hope that it will be easier to film and show you some views, but um, really it is well clagged in, I don't know how it will work out. Yeah, as you can see, clag above me here, so the idea I'm thinking is rather than go too high, I'll just hit below the clag level, find a camp area, and we'll settle in for the night there. It's about, I think it's five o'clock-ish, plenty of light, but it was just nice to get set up in time for dinner. But yeah, not a great day, and the forecast tomorrow is worse. Okay, let's fill up for water for tonight. We'll get uh, my filter bottle filled and I'll get the Nalgene topped up as well. This looks like an ideal source. Probably full of sheep shit, but we will filter it. I hope it'll be all right. Keep going for a minute. Just want to test how repellent these uh, boots are. You can see that. They're beading quite nicely so far, actually. Let's see. Yeah, whatever the coating is on the outside seems to be working pretty well. Yeah, so actually, yeah, very comfortable. Um, I seem to have broken them in quite nicely. They're very soft, very well padded, quite slipper-like. Um, the one thing I would say I've noticed is on gravel and tough terrain, when you go over rocks, you feel the rocks underneath here as if it's slightly thinner than some treads. It's not actually invasive, if you know what I mean, but I'm certainly sensitive to it, I notice it. Anyway, we'll see. These will have to be tested a bit longer term. Right, onwards and upwards. I'm gonna think I've got a wee spot, I know. I've used it before, you probably saw it with my review of the Crux Assault tent. So I'm thinking, it's not so much a destination, but more a wee test bed area. Say one wee observation about the Acaso is it's a bit slow to boot up. It's not the quickest, which means you've got to be considered about what you're trying to trying to film. Anyway, let's get this tent up and get our home up for the night. That's it up with the basic six pegs roughly. I'm sorry, I put in another couple of the pole lines, but you don't really need them. 
and in three season mode so at the moment we don't have the crossing pole on so what I'll do is we'll run it in three season mode to start with and if the wind picks up or the weather gets a bit wilder or well, just for the sake of trying it put the four season set up on there's also extra pegging points which I need to put in now as well anyway just to keep it fly nice and taut and stop it billowing in There we go, it certainly looks like a protective little haven. Uh, you can see actually the vestibule's getting blown in quite a bit. I don't think I'm really end on to be honest. I'm probably more door in slightly, a bit annoying, but uh, anyway, we'll see how it copes with it. So I don't know if this is actually in their instruction manual, but what I did was I was worried about these straps flapping when the four season pole's not attached. But if you extend them out to the first extent you can actually click one into the other one and vice versa and they just sit against the fly without them swinging about as loops it doesn't say that in the instruction manual but actually what's a treat i'll show you the other side you can see it there that seems to work really well right okay time to get the new air up and get settled in Let me show you just how long this tent is, so I have the pack in one end here The mat actually comes halfway down and then I've thrown all my stuff sacks with warm gear, sleeping bags etc Beyond the mat near the vent and at the other end I've still got another two feet beyond the mat as well So yeah there is tons of room, you can't really complain about the room And the head height is bearable, 95 centimetres so I'm on the Thermarest Neo Air and sitting on it just now and I'm clear at five foot eight. I think you'd stoop slightly any taller, but you could detach up here, as I said previously in the video, I think. So yeah, it's a comfortable place. It's uh, noticeably slightly louder than my stone glacier tent, but then that's that's an assault tent, so they tend to be very drum tight and quite a small panel area, whereas this has got bigger panels. So it's kind of getting used to that single hoop idea again, which I haven't actually had one for quite a long time, I think. I think the last one was maybe the Zastrugi. Strange, strange name. So just while it's while it's in my mind actually, just the boots so far have been very comfortable. As I said, there is a lot of padding around them. So your foot feels very well isolated around the sides. Seems to be back on again. So it seems to I guess suffer from the same cold weather, cold temperature problem for the batteries. But the old GoPros did. I think the GoPro new battery is probably better, so I believe, for cold temperatures. But it looks like the castle maybe has to catch up on it as well. So tonight, naked Japanese style chicken yakisoba with chicken breast slices. And the water's on the boil, 300 mils, and then we'll get it put in there and brew up. It's about just before 7 o'clock now, actually. You forget because it's so light, you kind of start to eat later. Anyway, we are now filming on the Acaso again, so let me know what you think. And it seems to have recovered just because I've kept it inside my chest pocket. So while I'm cooking my dinner, I was just thinking there actually, uh, this tent is about 465 quid by the time you land it in the UK from Norway, um, including the VAT. And I suppose if you look at Hellebergenan and Actos, they're probably, I think they retail about 700 odd pounds at the moment. So they're definitely a step up in cost. However, if you looked at something like the Abisko Light 1, which I think is also a direct competitor, maybe in the same market as this, it's about 400 to 450. So actually price-wise, very comparable. So we look outside while we're watching this boil. Yes. Yeah, a bit claggy. Not a lot of views. Well, chicken yakisoba. Excellent. Much cheaper than your... Uh, fire pot meals at £8.50 and it was very tasty so I'll just have a wee pudding and then I'm going to go out for a wee wander and then I think what we'll do is we'll set up the four season pole on this the crossing pole just for the evening just for the hell of it it doesn't really need it I'm actually getting more and more confident about it in the wind now because um, it's got a fair rattling but it's low profile seems to shed wind pretty efficiently
Well, there's a lot of tent time tonight. Just no views outside, absolutely freezing and hardly worth going out for. I don't know if you can see me, but hopefully you can, because it's getting quite dark. So I don't know what the low light is like in their castle, how sensitive it is. But uh, yeah, the wind's really got up quite a lot, so I'm going to, I think before any heavy rain comes on, I'll get out, I'll put the crossing pole on, just to see if it makes any difference. I don't think I really need it, but it just seems like a good excuse to try it, see if it even quietens the tent down in the wind a bit, because the wind is fair rather than over it. Uh, I just checked the forecast in Clern below me here, uh, 20 mile an hour there it says, I guess it's gusting to about 30 up here probably. Anyway, I'll nip outside and let's get this done. Oh, and as you can see, it actually does kind of stabilise it out a wee bit, quietens it down a wee bit in the wind by the look of it. Well, I'd say the pole definitely makes the tent quieter. So, if nothing else, it probably wasn't needed really, but it must be doing about 30 mile an hour. Um, but it does make the tent a bit quieter, for sure. Right, it's about 10 o'clock, I think it's about time to go on my kip. So we look outside, that's nice. Yeah, all in all, quite impressed with how it handles the uh, wind. It's certainly a wind cheating shape. And not overly noisy for a single hoop type tent. Anyway, I am going to nip out, brush my teeth. Okay, let's check the pegs one last time before I retire. Looks good. Yeah, okay. yeah, it really isn't pleasant out here. It, it's blowing. I'm going to go for a pee and get back in quickly because it's also very wet and claggy. Right, folks, before this camera chucks it again, I'm off to my bed. It's about half past ten. Uh, the wind is howling out there. I'd say about 30 mile an hour, but the crossing pole's making a huge difference. So hopefully I'll get a good night's sleep. Uh, some heavy rain forecast during the night. But we'll see how it goes, and I will see you guys in the morning. See you later. Going from a very windy night to a very wet morning. I don't see any leaks and there's no condensation, which is good. And as you can see, absolutely nothing to see outside. Right folks, I'm going to sign off now. It was a wet, a windy night, but a perfect test for the tent. Um, all went very well actually, I mean the crossing pole really quietened it down when it got really dusty. I think it was probably about 30 miles an hour or so. So yeah, the tent has done exactly what it says in the tent. It's very functional, it's worked very well. It's been spacious inside, spacious in the vestibule. No real criticisms actually. I would change a couple of wee minor details, look for a hanging line, possibly swap out the basic aluminium pole, possibly replace the end poles for carbon, because it is a wee bit on the heavy side, uh, about 1.8 kilograms and the extra crossing pole takes another 300 grams so it's a 2.1 kilogram winter tent but uh, yeah I'm quite impressed with it, worked very well, double doors were good so I'm going to head now, if you've got any questions drop me a line below and I'll try and answer them see you soon, cheers just now